What levels of cheapness have astonished you? My girlfriend invited me to her mother's birthday dinner, and tonight she revealed to me we would be dining on leftovers from her brother's rehearsal dinner a year ago. Maybe saving leftovers for work the next day, but a year later, what the duck? My mom had a boyfriend that would pull the stems off of cherries before purchasing them from the grocery store, because he felt they'd weigh less without the stems, and he'd get more for the money. He probably saved a dollar over 10 years. You can't argue with savings. My grandmother, as she didn't own a computer, had to mail in all her bill payments. One month she didn't get her water bill, or it was delivered to someone else by accident. Whatever the cause, her next bill was for both that month and the previous month, and included a late fee that was less than the cost of a stamp. For the rest of her life she skipped the bill one month and then paid both the next, because she saved a few cents by using just one stamp instead of two. This was a woman who had somewhere around a million dollars in the bank when she died. Whenever we all go out to eat as a group, my grandma's boyfriend, man friend's significant other, likes to get everyone's free lemon wedge that typically comes with their waters, squeeze them all into his, and then add a packet of sugar so that he doesn't have to pay for a lemonade. Last night this happened at a fair. The man at the front of the line for ice cream offered to pay for all the kids in the family behind him, because he was taking a while. He gave the booth 40 bucks and said what was ever left over should go to the charity, the church was running the ice cream booth. The people with the kids ice cream totaled $21, and they insisted for the change back. It wasn't even their money. When the lady refused she asked for the manager. What the duck? My grandfather had a firmly held belief that any drink served in a restaurant should cost no more than 10 cents per glass. So if the restaurant charged $1.50 for a sweet tea with free refills, he would sit there until he'd drank at least 15 glasses. Nobody else could leave until he was done. When I delivered pizza there was a guy who ordered from us 2-3 times a week, and the conversations would go like this, Customer, how much is that? Me, um, $18.35 total. Customer, okay. Tell the driver I'm paying with a $20 bill, and I want $1.65 back. Never tipped, never smiled, never said thank you. One Friday night his order was the last in a 5-6 order run, and the previous customers had taken all my coins and loose change. I ended up shorting him a dime and apologized. By the time I get back to the store, my boss is on the phone trying to calm him down because, to quote, I refuse to give him his change. My dad is a physics professor at a university, which if you know of this breed of humans, none of this might surprise you. He, I swear to all that is sacred goes to the cafeteria on campus and makes a meal out of the free condiments, Mexican style chips salsa, chopped onion packets, crackers, etc. Then, he'll call me to brag about it. Another one he does. He found a store that sells expired food for a ridiculously low price. He said he spent $20 and now has microwavable popcorn for life. My dad never buys new tires, he buys used ones that the shop keeps when people replace them. He gets the tires for super cheap after negotiating them, like 15 to 20 dollars. The best part is that he avoids driving to not waste gas, so much that the tires actually never wear out, they just rot. When he feels like splurging, he will buy a pork shoulder which is a lot of meat for about 7 to 10 dollars. He cuts off all of the meat and grinds it along with free condiments from a cafeteria into a cylinder shape, that he wraps with shopping bags from a store. Then, he freezes it. When he wants some, he slices some pieces off like patties and sautés them, in its own oil of course. This will last him months. One time he called me while I was cooking. He asked me what I was making, and I said that I was cooking spaghettis. He said that spaghettis are about 3 times the price per mass as rice, and throwing away my money. He doesn't use toilet paper, just water, which is actually cleaner anyway saw a guy take money from the tip jar to pay for a muffin like it was nothing. Poor cashier was in shock, I guess because she didn't say anything. And this was from a cafeteria in an office building. Guy who did this was wearing an expensive suit. This would piss me off to no end when I worked at a coffee shop. 
The tip jar isn't a mandatory tip, it was exactly only for us when we went above and beyond for a customer, and they wanted us to have extra. I had people go, oh I'm short, and just rummage through the jar for two dollars. I had to stop them more than once, and tell them it isn't a free good as jar for you to buy that extra donut you cunt. My economics teacher in high school once told us, that he adopted two Chinese girls instead of having his own kids, because statistically, Asian girls eat less, so he would be saving a lot of money in the long run. I believe his exact quote was, when we go to McDonald's, they can split one hamburger, and it's still better than the gristle they were eating in China. What a deal. This didn't strike me as being quite so racist until some time later. My mom and I once went to the cinema with a new friend of hers, as we were leaving, the friend found $5 under one of the seats, and then made us stay back in the empty cinema while she checked every row for any more fallen cash. My grandma would take my brother and sister to a restaurant, and instead of buying us milk, she'd make us drink the tiny creamers. We used to frequent a bar slash club when we were younger, because they accepted our fake IDs and sold $1 beers on Friday nights. We were buying rounds of beers, and I'll never forget one of my mates coming up to me as it was my buy, and telling me that he would like to opt out of that round, and if I could just give him the $1 instead. I delivered pizza last fall for some quick Christmas money. We had a customer that, I was warned, didn't tip. The manager said he would order the cheapest thing on the menu, for delivery, not tip, required napkin slash plate, and would demand his change. He lived 3 miles away in an ugly little trailer. I clearly remember each of his orders. My first time there he looked shocked, and said he'd never seen a girl driver. He had ordered 6 chicken wings and his order was $7.86. He tipped me a dollar. When I got back and told my co-workers they were shocked. The next time I forgot the plate and napkins. He told me he needed the plate because he shared the wings with his dog. I had napkins in my glove box from Taco Bell. He asked if I had hot sauce from there too. He took everything I kept from fast food restaurants. In that short amount of time he told me that he was a disabled veteran, fighting to get his pension, and that his friend that has a business, lets him clean the equipment and paid him a few bucks for it. The next time I paid for his food. The next I got to answer the phone and asked him, wouldn't it be cheaper to get a couple of cheeseburgers? He said yeah, but McDonald's didn't deliver. I did though, and got off work in 30 minutes. I don't work there anymore. But I still bring him food every so often. I had a bunch of cheap big pens when I worked as a server at Applebee's. I left one with a table so they could sign the receipt. I watched the dad sign it, get up, start walking away with his family, turn around 6 feet later, go back to the table, and pocket my pen. I went to a birthday dinner for my mother-in-law at a Filipino restaurant. Along with my wife and I, four of her friends were there. The friends ordered a mountain of food for the table. There were seven of us there, but if there were a dozen, we couldn't have finished it all. This was a bit irritating right of the bat, because while I was happy to pitch in for her birthday dinner, I didn't want to pay 20% of a goddamn feast from Westeros. It would end up being over $200 worth of food. So then the check comes, and I pitch in my credit card, and three out of the four friends turn into statues, except the oldest gentleman who offers something like 15 bucks. I grab the bill and divide it by 5, leaving out the dishes and drinks that my wife and I ordered for ourselves, and tally it up, saying what everyone owes. Crickets. I remind everyone that they were the ones who ordered this giant mound of food in the first place. Half of which is going to go to waste. To prevent awkwardness, my mother-in-law grabs the bill and runs off, leaving my credit card, to go pay it. My wife prevents me from stopping her and causing a scene. I quietly lay into the three deadbeats at the table, for letting an elderly woman on a fixed income pay a $200 plus bill for her own birthday dinner. I lose it and call them ducking moochers, and whoa, suddenly there's that scene everyone was working so hard to prevent, with them screaming at me and me screaming back. The restaurant owners understandably intervene and toss all of us out. I go back in and apologize, and explain what happened. The restaurant, to their credit, knocked 40% off the bill out of nothing more than kindness, 
Solo slow grill in Las Vegas, yow, and cancel the charge on my mother-in-law's card, and I picked up the rest, which was still quite a bit, but I felt a lot better about it. I was a bartender at a country club. Employees are allowed to take home any food left over from weddings. After a wedding full of drunken assholes throwing things, grabbing waitresses, and other crap. The mother of the bride marched into the kitchen demanding two things, that all leftovers be given to her right now, and that the 18% tip added onto the bill for us should be removed. After explaining that she had already paid enough for this wedding, and didn't want us getting anything else from her. This was after she had made sure that no tip jars would be out for us, because they would take care of us later. One year. My grandparents live through the depression. They waste nothing. Their freezer is a menagerie of ancient treasures. Last year we ate Thanksgiving at their house. My mom did all the cooking, but my grandma contributed a couple of desserts. One was a marshmallow -y jello sort of thing with pistachios. When we got done eating, she proudly declared that it had been sitting in the freezer since 1996. She was afraid we'd find out and would waste it by not eating it. Weird thing is it was still tasty as hell. TLER, grandparents fed us 15 year old pudding. A group of folks went out for dinner at a convention, and several people had leftovers. When we returned, one of the people who had not been able to get out to dinner was bummed, so one of the diners said, well, I have some leftovers, if you'd like them. Sure. Okay. My meal was $10, and there's about half of it left, so you owe me. No, I am not kidding. No, it was not me. My parents are both very cheap, but my dad is especially not generous. One summer day when I was maybe 13 years old, my dad finally agreed to take me to get my eyes examined. To his surprise, I did need glasses, he insisted I wouldn't. He reminded me that he had only agreed to get my eyes examined not to actually buy me glasses. So if I wanted the glasses, I would need to have them be my birthday present. I really wanted to be able to read the board in school, so I agreed. My birthday is on Christmas, and I always got a combined gift. So now I had to wait a year and a half to get my next present, and I knew it was my fault, because I chose the glasses. I understand that parents can't always pay for things, but there was something especially cheap about turning buying me glasses, into an excuse to not need to get any presents a full 6 months later. I don't really talk to my dad anymore. I worked for a short time as a luxury travel agent, and agents get tons and tons of free stuff all the time. Every day there would be vendors setting up in the conference room for breakfast, lunch and afternoon snacks, which we got for free, we just had to go listen to the vendors pitch. This would totally go to some of the old school agents heads. The agents in the office next to mine were notoriously cheap, especially the 60 something year old boss. They would push their way into the conference room, throw their business card in the general director of the poor vendors, and take as much food as possible. Multiple plates piled high. I'd pass their office, and the food would be just sitting out on the desks uneaten. The boss was known for showing up at vendor sponsored dinners and events with his wife, uninvited, and they'd bring plastic ziploc bags and fill them with food from the buffet to take home. He made a ton of money, so it wasn't out of necessity, he was just insanely cheap and entitled. My favorite story about him, was that our company used to go around the offices some Friday afternoons in the summer with an ice cream cart, and everyone would grab something. One each because we're ducking adults in a professional workplace. Not this guy. He filled a manila envelope with like 20 ice creams, labeled in property of, name, do not touch. And put it in the office freezer. My sassy co-worker used to go steal ice creams from the envelope all the time for our office, just to spite him. Tasted so good, 